For years, our company has been focused on solving issues related to item reuse, similar parts, you know, finding and reusing things within companies. It's a big subject, whether you're a big company or a little company. And we've been primarily focusing on big data problem solving with databases and fancy algorithms and and uh, a lot of computer science approaches to the problem. And it's worked pretty well for us, but it doesn't really help the customers uh, be more engaging and upfront about what they select and to verify, more importantly, to not just select things, but to also verify that things are compatible with each other based on multiple properties and parameters. So um, to give you an example of kind of what we've been working on for the last month and a half, we've got a little tool that we've called uh, item reuse, and it's an Excel add-on. And uh, just to kind of jump into it a little bit here, I'm going to pull up some data. This just comes from a, a, a Creo family table. And I'm going to copy this data to a different uh, worksheet. The reason being is that we may want to use this to kind of feed an automation process within NitroCell or just have something that's completely separate away from the CAD system. So our little item reuse um, add-on is sitting here. It's detected that we're creating a new sheet and says, hey, do you want us to upgrade to add the necessary codes and features to do this? We'll say, sure. Do I need the instructions for it? No, because I kind of know what I'm doing by now. So I'm going to paste this data in here. And this, again, is just the raw data uh, from the family table. I don't need the, uh, the model name column here. We're just going to work, and I don't necessarily need this extra feature uh, for this demonstration. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of uh, pull this off, and I'm going to get rid of my generic row because that doesn't really apply. I'm going to title this part number, and I'm going to leave it the rest of the same. Now, this is not the best looking table, so I'm going to format it a little bit so it's a little bit prettier. And I'm going to convert it back to a range because I don't really need or use the tables. Um, and then let's just kind of change the background color so it's a little prettier. Okay, that looks pretty good. So um, I've got this table of data here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to, um, let's say, add in uh, another table of data that's exactly the same size. So here's my source data. I'm going to use this for filtering. Now, I do need some filters, so I'm going to copy and paste just these top two rows here. And now I'm going to use these as filters to kind of filter this data to get the results that I'm looking for. So to pull this off, um, we've already upgraded the worksheet. The only thing that's really needed is uh, some named ranges. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a named range called standard data. And that is going to encompass this range of data right here. Then I'm going to create another one. And we're going to call this uh, standard filtered. And then we'll also kind of identify our filters at the top here with a named range. Standard, standard filters. And I also need to have just the title so I know where the columns are going to go. STD titles. So um, now that I've got that, if I come in and I purge any of this data, you'll notice that things start flying around. So if I say I'm looking for anything with a, length, a width of 30, or I'm looking for anything that's a, a width of 100, it starts to prune it. Or if I say I want it greater than 30, it starts to prune the data accordingly. So we can use this to kind of uh, uh, pre-filter data. Um, another thing we could do that's pretty, pretty slick with this is we can actually come in and let's copy uh, these values over to here with these, uh, and we're going to set up a new range uh, and we're going to call this one um, standard part number and we'll create another range called standard length. And then we'll create another one called standard width. And when we start to process this now, you'll notice that it is not just filtering the content, but it's also giving me the distinct values in each of these columns. So if I'm looking for anything greater than 30, or if I type in, let's say, a specific width of 30, it shows me the two different links that are out there, the two different models that are out there. And um, that's pretty handy. So there's some basic filtering that you could do, but you could also go a little bit further with this. So if I wanted to actually come in and say, well, you know, I'd like to have some pull downs to kind of run off of this data here. Um, so let's say that I want to just kind of get the part numbers that are available. So let's, uh, whoops, wrong button. Let's uh, 
create a new validation list and we're going to call this uh, standard part number and you'll notice here that my standard part number is now updating based on the list that's here so if I come in and I say give me a hundred okay well that list is just shortened down and if I let's say put in greater than 30 you'll notice that list is also now shortened down even further if we put in a specific value like 50 this list is even here and if I put in a number that doesn't even exist you'll notice that it defaults to custom is my is my uh, field now the other the other cool thing about this is that whenever you let's say um, uh, whoops let's put in a hundred whenever you choose a value that's in here like this you'll see that it automatically turns green it's validating the content that you've selected based on the list that's there so if I come in and I say 125 it will re-update that to look and see is this value that's in that cell actually matching anything that's available if it doesn't it throws it in red if i say uh, 115 no if i come back at 100 yes that works um, so we can actually do that again for these other things so we'll do another validation list and this time we'll do standard uh, length and that gives me my custom links then we'll do another validation list for standard width and you'll notice that it is uh, going to be showing me uh, values that work so as you'll notice here based on the uh, available filtered content these lists are going to update um, based on what's available now they're not linked to each other so I can put in incorrect combinations of things uh, and you'll notice that uh, they don't work. However, if I come in and I say 125, you'll notice it starts to indicate that there's a problem there. And it's also limiting the list of available parts uh, that are there too. Well, I don't really want to drive these from up here. I kind of want to drive them from down here. Well, there's a way to do that too. So you just come back to your formulas and we're going to create a brand new input range for that called input. That's kind of our way to uh, catch the data that's there. And we're going to say, well, that's standard uh, standard length. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the cell next to it. And we'll call this input standard width. Now look what happens here. So if I come and I change these, you'll notice that it automatically copies that data up and then filters the content available. So if I change that, you'll notice that even if I select the opposite direction like to 40 it will limit the available length so it's not there's not a hierarchy of decision there and if i select something here and choose something there it will show me that these inputs produced an incorrect uh, value but it will show me the stuff that does work um, so if i print this down to 50 you'll notice that works if i clear this out and change that to 60 that invalidates this part that's referencing that so um, very very handy uh, thing and you could actually uh, copy and paste this uh, multiple places and have different values so if we take this out and we say well I want this to be this value and this to be this value and I want this to be a hundred whoops cancel I can't I can't enter that because it's not a valid value there so let's change it back so let's change this to a hundred you'll notice that these are changing so if I clear that out again and I say, well, I want this to be 125, those don't work at all. Um, if I want this to be, let's say, 100, these work, but that one, or these, this one works, but these don't. Uh, and you could also come in and, you know, flip it the other way and say, well, I'd like to look at the 50s. And it says, well, that's not 50, so it's not matching. So, um, or it's not satisfying the list of available parts. So anyway, Quick overview, like I said, this is just a very quick way to take existing data that's there. And if you want to add brand new data, you can you could literally just come in, insert a brand new row, and we're going to increment this down. We'll call this uh, 125, and we'll call this uh, 75. Um, and we'll just kind of reset stuff here. So if I come in and I say I'm looking for 125, you'll see that uh, my new part here, we'll call this new part, just so it's easier to see. Let's clear that and re-filter it. You'll notice that um, new part is now an option and it is now a valid option and I've got two different uh, widths to choose from. 
So hope you like it. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, and you can do multiple tables. You can do multiple sheets. You can put things on different places. It's pretty handy.